In reading part A, you're going to see four texts, okay? Text A, text B, text C, and text D. And you will have 15 minutes to answer 20 questions. That means that you're gonna have to answer a question in under one minute in order to complete this subtest. There are three types of questions. There are matching questions, which always come at the beginning. And then there are short answer and sentence completion questions. My name is Jay, I'm one of the expert teachers here at E2 Language, and in this lesson, we're gonna do 10 practice questions, and I'm gonna show you the answers right at the end, so stick around. Let's take a look. OET reading part A. So on test A, you will see four texts. Now, each of the texts will relate to a specific topic. You can see right at the top here, hay fever. That is what each of these texts are about. Each text, however, will differ. Text A, for example, might be a definition. Text B might be about treatment. Text C might be about a particular patient. And text D might be some sort of visual illustration or graph. Just be mindful that you might see tables with bullet points. As I mentioned, you will see a visual or numerical information in at least one of the texts. Pay attention to footnotes. Some of them will just have continuous prose, that is just like a paragraph. And each of the texts will also contain different fonts. So just be mindful of that. Okay, in this video, we're just going to concentrate on two texts, not four. So it's twice as easy or half as hard, something like that. What you need to do on test day before you start answering the questions is actually spend some time with each of the texts. We recommend about 30 seconds. And in that 30 seconds, you're going to be paying attention to what the text is about, keywords and headings, okay? You can't read the whole thing and you should not read the whole thing, but in a very short period of time, right at the beginning, you should get a very good idea of what that text is about because then when you go to start answering the questions, it's going to help you enormously to navigate between the four texts. If you also want to print out these texts, you can do that by clicking the downloadable link below. Uh, it will come with the questions as well. So let's take a closer look at text A. Okie dokie, so when I look at text A, I see this word treated, okay? So we're talking here about treatment. This is what this text is about. We've got something here about symptoms, specialists, medications. Here we have dot points uh, listing various types of medications, including antihistamines or sprays or nasal sprays or decongestants. Um, something else about treatment. Here I have allergen immunotherapy, something about long term. Uh, if I go down here, I've got drops, tablets, and I've got some ages as well, okay? That's probably enough. I've now got a pretty good idea about what text A is about. Feel free to pause the video and have a quick read through the text. Let's now look at text B. So if I do the same thing with text B, I can see it's about testing, an allergy testing here, something about a skin prick test, uh, something about symptoms. Here's a sort of method for a skin prick test, one to three, something about a droplet, uh, immune system, uh, again, symptoms. I'm scanning my eyes over and I'm looking for keywords here, something about a doctor, uh, lifestyle. I've now got a pretty good idea of what text B is about and it took me no more than about 30 seconds. And what I have done here is I've asked myself what is the text about, what are the titles and subtitles, and what are the keywords. That's what I'm focusing on in that speed reading session right at the beginning. Okay, so we now have a good idea about what text A and text B are about, and on test A also text C and text D. The first questions that you're going to see are matching questions, right? And basically, you're gonna see a question and it's going to ask you in which text can you find information about blah, 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 blah. And the answer to these will be A, B, C, or D. 
okay? So it's pretty straightforward. You're not finding detailed information here. You're basically saying, okay, there's in, uh, in text A, you'll find information about this. In text B, you'll find information about that. That's why it's important at the start to have an understanding about what each text is about. Ready? Let's do the first set of matching questions. Matching. So, in which text, A or B, can you find information about? So we're just looking across these two texts. So in which text can you find information about the best way to find out if an allergen is responsible for your symptoms? Okay, so when I look at this one, I see keywords like responsible and symptoms. Now, if I go up here, I can see immediately symptoms, but the point is to not just word match. I need to think about meaning. The best way to find out if an allergen is responsible for your symptoms. Now, it says here something interesting. It says allergy testing is the main way to learn whether your hay fever symptoms are caused by a particular allergen. I like that part, and I'm pretty sure that that's where you could find information to answer that one there. Let's see at the end, though. Question two. In which text can you find information about who to visit if hay fever symptoms are becoming a problem? So here we have a keyword, who. It's a question with a who. Sometimes it might be when or what or how many. These are keys. If I'm answering a question regarding who, I need the name of a type of person. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so we know that we need the name of probably a medical professional. So who to visit if hay fever symptoms are becoming a problem. Now let's look down here at text B. It says, speak with your doctor about what the results of your allergy test mean and whether you need to make changes to your lifestyle. Does that say the same thing as this part here? Who to visit if hay fever symptoms are becoming a problem? Not really. Let's take a closer look at this part here. It says, if symptoms persist or affect your day-to-day -day activities, discuss treatment options with your general practitioner who may refer you to a clinical immunologist or allergy specialist. So who to visit then? Text A or B, you decide. Question three, in which text can you find information about things to consider alongside allergy testing? This one should be pretty straightforward. I want you to make a quick snap decision now. So the first series of questions that you do just ask you to decide in which text, A, B, C, or D, can you find information about this, okay? And on your answer sheet, you'll just be writing A, C, D, B, A, whatever it is, okay? Now we're gonna do some short answer questions. And now what we need to do is actually take a word or a short phrase directly from one of those texts to answer a short question, okay? We're not going to transform that word in any way. We're taking it directly from the text to answer the question. Let's do a few. Short answer. So it says, answer each of the questions, four to seven, with a word or short phrase from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both. In other words, you might have a word, or a couple of words, or a word and a number, or a number and a word, etc. Let's take a look at each of these questions. So number four, which type of medication is most suitable for long-term use? Even by just reading that question, which type of medication, we're getting an idea of which text to look in because that's the first step. You don't wanna look across the four texts each time. You wanna read the question and go, aha, that's from text B. I'm gonna look in text B for that answer because it's about treatments, for example. Question number five, what may be caused by taking too many allergy tests? Question number six, Treatment is crucial for the management of which particular condition? Question seven, which type of antihistamine is available without a prescription? 
So there are plenty of keywords there we can use to locate which text we need to look in. Here we go. Number four, which type of medication is most suitable for long-term use? So considering we're talking about treatment here, I suspect that we should look into text A more closely. And we're also looking for a type of medication and you can see in the dot points there a list of medications. So which one is mentioned for long-term use out of those dot points? Question five, what may be caused by taking too many allergy tests? Well, from the looks of this question, we know that we need to look in text B, right? Because it's about allergy tests. So we can ignore text A. So what may be caused by taking too many allergy tests? Let's take a closer look at text B here. And I want you to look closely at this paragraph here. Remember, we're taking a word, a single word, or a short phrase, including a number perhaps, directly from the text. Number six, treatment is crucial for the management of which particular condition? Now, considering it's talking about treatment, I'm going to ignore text B, which is about testing. I'm gonna read carefully for the crucial management of which particular condition. Scan your eyes across text A with me. Can you see anything there about importance or crucialness or something like that? I'm gonna direct your eyes to this little part here. Remember we're taking a word or a short phrase directly from here to answer question number six. And let's do question seven. Which type of antihistamine is available without a prescription? So we know that we're looking at the list of medications here. And if we look closely, we can see something about antihistamine, which is a great keyword to search for. Which one do we not need a prescription for? Okay. Just a little tip, you need to be very careful when taking that word or that short phrase directly from the text that you copy it exactly as it is in the text. So if there's a little hyphen or uh, the number or maybe it's milligrams, mg, or maybe the spelling of the word is just very confusing, please do not change it in any way. Copy it directly from the text. Even if you get the right word, but you spell it wrong, it'll be marked incorrect on test day, okay? Now, here's something really important I wanna to talk to you about. If you have not taken the OET test before, or you have taken the OET test before, but you've been unsuccessful, but you don't really know why, then you should take our mini mock test with feedback. I think this is possibly the best place to start your preparation. The reason is it's gonna give you test-like simulation. So you sit at the computer and you'll do the listening, reading, and writing in one sitting. The writing will be sent to one of our expert teachers who is going to mark it for you, give you corrections, and mark it according to the criteria so you know exactly what you need to do on test day to get the score you want. Now, to take the speaking, what you do is you book a speaking mock test with one of our examiners. And you'll actually take a one-on-one -on -one speaking mock test, like a role play, after which they're going to give you feedback on your speaking performance. This is a really inexpensive way to prepare for the OET test, to know whether you need to do more preparation or if you're ready to go. It's a dead simple way to get started. Cool, you can check it out at e2language.com. Okay, let's continue on. Sentence completion. So these are very similar to the short answer questions, but what we do here is we complete a sentence with a word or a short phrase. And if we look at eight, nine, and 10 below, you can see that there's a gap because they're missing a word or a short phrase. Let's take a look at number eight. 
when undergoing desensitization, a person's age should be greater than. So we know we need a number. Number nine, a skin prick test, which we saw before in our speed reading, is usually performed on the arms or we know we, that we need a body part. Number 10, people with high blood pressure as well as, well, here's kind of interesting. We might need another disease or a type of person should not use decongestants. Okay, let's take a closer look here. So number eight, when undergoing desensitization, a person's age should be greater than what? All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna to have to scan my eyes across these texts here because desensitization, this is definitely a key word that I wanna look for. So let's look across here. Can you see the word desensitization? Hmm. Maybe I've missed it here. Where is it, where is it? Oh, hold on. Look at this, desensitization. Okay, so I'm gonna ignore text B because I found the keyword. Plus, I know that I'm looking for a number, a person's age. There's no numbers in text B at all. There are plenty of numbers down here. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. Treatment is usually for three to five years and typically offered to people older than five years. Greater than, older than, I think we might have found the answer there. Do you know what the answer is? Number nine, a skin prick test is usually performed on the arms or what? So we know we're looking in text B because it's all about testing. And here's the bit about a skin prick test. So now we can read the little method here, step one, two, and three. Where is it performed? I'll point you in the right direction. You need to find, take one word from here. And finally, question number 10. People with high blood pressure, as well as something or someone, should not use decongestants. Hmm, so we need to find decongestants because that is a good keyword here, right? We're taking that word, we're scanning our eyes across. Ah, uh, here we go. I can see decongestants here. So people with high blood pressure, as well as something or someone, should not use decongestants. I'm just gonna point you in the right direction here. It might be one word or it might be two words. Okay, hopefully you've got it. So before we look at the answers and you can see what you got out of 10, I really want you to check out this website here, e2language.com, where you can sign up for a free full practice OET test, plus the methods lessons, plus heaps heaps more, and if you wanna upgrade your package, you can do that at any time. You can purchase the mini mock test. We've got another mini mock test. You can get writing feedback, you can take tutorials. There's live classes happening every day with expert teachers. This really is the best place to study for your OET test. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. Okay, so matching questions. Number one was text B, you just write B. Number two was A. Number three was B. Short answer, intranasal corticosteroid sprays, which was from text A. You do not need to write text A on test A. That's just for our purposes here. You just write the words from the text. Number five, confusion. Six, asthma. Seven, non-sedating or non-sedating antihistamines would be correct either of those. Hopefully you copied down the hyphen there with non-sedating. The sentence completion questions, five or five years. Number nine, back. Number 10, pregnant women, with or without the capital letter, doesn't really matter there. Hopefully you found that helpful. Remember, OET is possible if you break it down into its little bits and you approach it methodically. And that's what we do at E2 Language. We work out what's going on with this test. We create these methods for you so you can work your way through each of the subtests step by step. Now, in the description below is the downloadable if you actually wanna practice that again on paper. But I do recommend you go across to e2language.com, sign up for free, 
There's the full practice test there, the live classes, the tutorials, the writing feedback, and of course, the mini mock tests, plural as well. My name is Jay, thanks very much for watching.